Hello fellow coffee botherers, in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Lapavoni Euro Piccolo Lever Espresso Machine. <laughs> to me on loan only by Shop Coffee in Cambridge who stock the Europicola and the Professional Lever range and I'll link to them in the description below. This isn't a sponsored review by the way, no one is paying me to do this review and I've not been given anything free either. So I'm going to do a very quick unboxing and setup because knowing these machines there's really not much to do there and then I'll make a coffee and I'll tell you what I think about it. First though, just to explain this espresso machine to anyone who isn't familiar with it. This is a fully manual lever operated espresso machine. It's been around for a long time since the early 1960s and although they're certainly not for everyone for reasons I'll discuss a bit later, the stunning looking machines are ridiculously simple and enjoyable to use, they're capable of amazing espresso and they're relatively inexpensive. This machine comes in two sizes. The Euro Piccola, this one has an 800ml boiler, while the bigger one, the Professional, has a 1.6 litre boiler. The Euro Piccola is currently available from Shop Coffee in three formats. This is the cheapest standard version and it's just under £600 in the UK. And the other two versions are the same specs, just slightly different in terms of aesthetics, the handle and portafilter material and so on. The professional range come in five versions at present. They all have a 1.6 litre water tank and a boiler pressure gauge. Most of them are just different aesthetically, but then the most expensive version, the Esperto Adotto, has a brew pressure gauge as well as a boiler pressure gauge and comes with standard and competition baskets and both standard and bottomless portafilter. As you may be aware, the Italian kitchen appliance brand Smeg acquired La Pavoni in 2019 and there's been some changes to these machines as a result. The main changes I've noticed is the brass pistons and the group size. So the group size is now 52mm on both the Europicola and the Professional. And while the piston on the Europicola was usually plastic and modding them for a brass piston has been a common mod over the years, they all now come with a brass piston, even this one, the standard Europicola. They all have chromed brass boilers and stainless steel bases and then the various models have different materials for the handles, boiler cap and drip tray cover. By the way, if I slip and accidentally pronounce this Euro Piccola, then feel free to take the mickey out of me in the comments. For years, I pronounced the name of this machine wrong, calling it the Euro Piccola instead of Euro Piccola. And even now that I know how it's supposed to be pronounced, I still can't help but occasionally slip back to pronouncing it wrong. So I'll try my best, but I may well slip. So let's get it unboxed. Ah, we've got a box inside a box and we've got Quite a nice box. As far as boxes go, that's a nice box. Quite a high quality instruction book like that. It's not the normal sort of staple together type. That's more the normal staple together type and that's just the warranty stuff. And look how nicely packed it is. Now, I've just noticed that I thought this was the base level that I picked up from Shop Coffee and I think they thought it was as well, but it's actually the Rosewood version. Little porter filter, scoop and plastic tamper thing and the single basket, the double basket is already in. That's the lever handle. That is the cappuccino torre. If you want to you can take the steam wand off and replace it with the steam pipe, put this cappuccino torre onto it. It's a just a milk frother basically so you put the tube into your milk bottle or milk jug and then it froths it directly into your coffee so if you want to use the cappuccino torre you can but it comes with a perfectly capable steam wand which i will demonstrate shortly unbox so let's set it up so the only thing we really need to do is in terms of building it is to put the handle on fairly long power cable. So this one, the wooden version, Lusso, comes with a metal tray and the plastic tray, but I'm giving this back so 
I'm not going to take the tape off the tray. I'll just use the plastic tray. The tray goes in there like that. I'm going to put water in it and then I'm going to turn it on. We've got the sight glass here. Tell us how much water's in it. Plugged in. So now turn it on. So I've unboxed it, I've set it up. Now let's make coffee. I'm using the Niche Zero, as you can see by the fact that I've got the Niche Zero here. Obviously you don't have to use the Niche Zero, but it is a very good, very good quality grinder. And it's zero retention, so we don't have to mess around with purging coffee while we're dialing in. And this isn't a dialing in video, so hopefully I'm gonna get somewhere near dialed in, but I'm not going to go to the nth degree in dialing in because it's not a dialing video but and I've not used this machine and I've not used my Euro Pickle for ages so I've got no idea what I'm doing with dialing it in so I'm just going to go about 15 and dose wise I'm not really sure what I'm doing with these baskets either as of yet but I'm going to go about 15 grams. So these are 52 mil porter filters. And interestingly, the little plastic tamper that comes with it, which I'm sure nobody uses, appear to be the old 51, because they rattle around in there. And I'll probably not, in fact, I'd say it's more like 50 or 49 even. So I'm not quite sure about the plastic tamper. It can't be that the bigger one is supposed to be. That, I'm sure that's for your hands because that is that won't even go in. But anyway, I wouldn't use that. I would get hold of a, a proper one. And this 51 mil does fit in, but there is a slight gap. And I'm using my fruit cake blend from the Coffee Works, cworks.co.uk. If you want to try this, use a discount code. YT25 for 25% off your first order for new customers. And I'm using this because it's my favorite at the moment for espresso. I'm using the Akaya Luna scales. This that I'm using as a little tamping mat is a hockey puck, just uh, an ice hockey puck, like plastic rubber. And they're about a quid and they work really well as a small tamping mat. Of course it would help if I had a 51 mil dosing funnel or dosing cup, but I haven't so I'm just going to have to be careful. So that, far too fast. I really need to tighten the grind up. And we've got 30 grams, so we've got one to two extraction, but it was very fast. <laughs> Actually, that tastes really nice. The weird thing about these machines, sometimes you can appear to be really poorly dialed in but it tastes great and that actually tastes rather good even though it's it's under extracted. Try again. So I'm going to take the grind a notch. Well, no, I'm going to take it a few notches further because that was far too fast. So I'm going to go down at 15. I'm going to go to 12. 15 grams. This time I'm going to grind directly into the porter filter rather than using the funnel because obviously it's not the right size. Bit better. Much better I would say. Give it a stir. So as not to upset James Hoffman. We're not quite there. I need to play around with the grind and with the dose, I think. But 
Not at all bad. Really decent mouthfeel. Most people pulling a shot like that straight away would be really, really happy with the quality of it. If you want precision, then yeah, you're gonna have to play around for a bit and I would have to play around for a bit to be precise, to properly dial in, but still, that isn't bad at all. Quite a nice shot, even though I know I'm not properly dialed in. I just need to steam some milk and I just realized I've not got a jug. So I need to dig a jug out from somewhere. And it's been a while since I've steamed on any Euro pickles, so I'm probably gonna mess this up. And that'll do, I suppose. From my first attempt using that steam wand, don't think that's gonna win any latte art awards, but as I say, it is the first time I've used that steam wand, so that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. But, not bad. How does it taste? Not bad at all. As I say, I haven't dialed in properly, but <laughs> you know what? If I'd just taken that out of the box, I'd not used one before, and I was relatively new to the home barista and thing, and I tasted that, I would be really, really impressed with it. I'd need to just spend a bit of time using this steam tip. It's a three hole tip, and it's actually quite powerful. It's more powerful than I was expecting. It's more powerful than I remember. I say, I've not used mine for a while, but it's more powerful than using my single hole steam tip on my Europicola, but I would expect that because it has got a three hole tip, so it will have more power. But I struggled a little bit with the position with this little jug, but that's just something you get used to. Overall, not a bad first use of the newer Europicola. And now I'm gonna go and drink this coffee. So you've seen me using the Lapavoni Euro Piccola, and now I'll tell you what I think of it. I really, really like these machines. They're so simple in design. The experience of using them is really quite unique. You're more involved in the process than you would be with a semi-auto pump espresso machine where you simply press a button and you've got full control over the extraction with the usual control that using a capable grinder like the Niche Zero gives you. And then in addition to that, the control you have over how the pressure is applied. I quite often hear people saying that these machines require a lot more barista skill than a pump machine or a much harder to get good results from than a semi-auto machine but I don't actually think that's quite true. I've had one of these now for a few years and I used it as my daily espresso machine for a while and personally I found that the learning curve to using a lever machine to be really short. Sure. I think if you're starting out with one of these instead of a pump machine then the learning curve might be slightly steeper because of the added variable of the manual pull but if you're already at some stage of the home barista journey I don't think you'll find using a lever machine to be all that much of a challenge. I actually found it really enjoyable and some of the best shots of espresso I've ever made have been on my Euro Piccola. I've personally found that when you get it wrong with one of these, the results are no worse than when you get it wrong with a pump espresso machine. And I didn't find it any harder to dial in and get decent shots with a Euro Piccola while I was using it as my daily machine than using a pump machine. The only reason I stopped using the Euro Piccola as my daily espresso machine is that for me, it's not really practical. And this is what I meant earlier when I said it's not for everyone. It's basically a boiler with a group and a lever and a steam wand. There's no water tank, it's just a manual fill boiler. So you fill it up, turn it on, wait about 10 minutes for it to be ready to brew, pull your shot, steam your milk if you're making a milky, and then really with the Euro Piccola, you're realistically only gonna be able to repeat this maybe three, 
maybe four times at a push before you need to turn it off. Allow it to cool down considerably so you can then take the boiler cap off and refill it. If you've got the professional, then it's similar, but you have double the capacity. So you'd probably comfortably make six, seven shots maybe before you have to refill it. Actually, I think this is practical for many people as lots of people just make one or two espressos once a day or maybe once in the morning and again later on in the day. But compared to the convenience of modern semi-auto machines, some of which are heated up and ready to go in a few minutes, some even in a few seconds, these machines really aren't about convenience. They're about experience and great espresso, of course. So if you need ultra convenience to be able to walk up to your machine at any time, make one, two, three, four, or more coffees and then walk away, these machines probably aren't for you. If you want a stunning looking machine, a level up in terms of home barista experience and the potential of stunning espresso, and you're not too fussed about convenience of modern semi-auto espresso machines, then the Europicola or the Professional might be for you. Just one thing I do want to make very clear is that these machines get very, very hot. So when it comes to practicality, you do need to take safety into account. If you can't put your espresso machine in a space where no one else is likely to get near it and accidentally touch it, particularly children, then I definitely wouldn't recommend this machine. I've still got this scar from when I reached behind my Europicola to turn the power off and it hurt. And one of the reasons I stopped using it as my daily espresso machine is because in our small kitchen, there's nowhere I can put it where someone else in the house who hasn't had the shock of making that mistake can't touch it. And I was worried about my wife and kids ending up branding themselves like I did. If you live by yourself, then this probably isn't an issue. But otherwise, just think carefully about how you can keep this machine out of the reach of anyone else in the home because it does get chuffing hot. I will be doing other videos on the Europicolet, so if you've got any specific questions or if you'd like me to do any specific videos on these machines, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and please don't forget to click the like button, thanks. The YouTube fairies get upset when the like button isn't clicked, and as I've said in the past, you don't want to anger the YouTube fairies. It's similar to throwing water on a mogwai. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not click here to watch another one? And don't forget to become an official Coffee Botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere, my face, to subscribe. Tatty bye!